Englishtown for the 29th annual Mopar Parts Nationals. everybody and welcome to Old Bridge Township Raceway Park in Englishtown, New Jersey for the geographically challenged out there. This is basically in the central or south central part of the state. We have a lot of fans on hand and we have a lot of cash to give out. Not to the fans, but to the racers. Almost a million six hundred thousand dollars. A quarter of a million dollars of that in cash will be going out here today at the Mopar Parts Nationals. Let's go back and take a look at some of the stuff that's going on so far this year in Top Fuel with Steve Evans. Despite his playful nature, Joe Amato is serious in the cockpit. After all, you don't become a five-time Winston Top Fuel Titleist by playing the fool. One of Joe's M.O.s in his champion years was to spend the early months building consistency that paid off in a late-season charge. That may be what he and Chief Jimmy Brock have in mind to catch points leader Corey McClanathan. And Joe's recent win in Dallas has him closing the gap to convert what at first seemed to be a Corey Mack runaway into a classic Top Fuel nail-biter. To counter Joe and Corey, team owner Alan Johnson and driver Gary Selzy, frustrated and winless on the air, have resurrected last year's car that took him to the Winston Top Fuel title, and they grabbed the pole with the old girl at 458. And what about Kenny Bernstein? He's flying. A solid 460 got him the number three spot, and he tickled the national speed record at 322 miles an hour. Kristen Powell looks good to defend her title. Number five career best, a 462. And Jim Head, the early season points leader, is fading. Barely qualified with a pokey 475. The fun car season at this time can easily be put to rhyme. Well, at winning force, he's so far unable, he still is atop the Winston points table. The quickest car belongs to Cruz, but consistent it's not and prone to lose. Caps has scored twice for Don the Snake, a run at the title he'll surely make. Crew Chief Richards has a hot rod for Chuck, but a DNQ in Dallas was the cruelest of luck. For Wilkerson, fate has played a cruel joke, twice in the finals but lost entire smoke. For the pack parts, breakage is a trend, but that has most drivers at their wit's end. A quick look at the Winston Points chase finds a close top five battle with the rest in no place. 15 races remain, so please do not curse. By season's end, we'll rewrite this verse. And history has already been rewritten this weekend with John Force going faster than any competitor, top fuel or funny car has ever gone in NHRA history. Despite a spectacular 323 miles an hour, Cruz Petragon has a lower ET and is in the number one qualifying position. But John could be formidable this weekend with his teammate Tony Petragon taking on rival Ron Caps in the first round. He could retain an important edge. And who would guess that Whit Bazemore, similar to his teammate in top fuel would shell the 98 car and take the 97 on disappointed so far in this season's results only three drivers warren johnson kurt johnson and mark osborne have qualified for every 1998 national event in pro stock and they hold three of the top four positions in the winston point standings coming into englishtown the exception Jim Yates, who did not qualify in Virginia after carburetor problems. In fact, many of the top 10 have missed one or more races, which illustrates just how fiercely competitive Pro Stock is, when one bad weekend can cost a team dozens of valuable Winston points. Kurt Johnson's played is set to have a full course day if he wants to. Yesterday's Pro Stock Challenge winner could earn bonus money, equaling $50,000 if he wins here today. His 11th national event would net him $148,000 cash and contingencies. That's a pretty good day. Trying to stop him will be the Coughlin brothers. Jeggy is three. Troy is in the fourth spot. Warren Johnson and Jim Yates have slipped just a little bit. They're the sixth and seventh qualified cars. And then there's Mike Thomas, whose finish line engines program has him in the number two spot. Now let's go upstairs and meet the man who'll be calling all our action, Big Bob. Fry. 
Big and Bob Fry are words you don't normally hear in the same sentence. The folks here at English Town, Old Bridge Town to Braceway Park, love their drag racing. Whether it's some Wednesday night match races that Vinnie Knapp puts together, or this, the running of the Mopar Parts Nationals, this is probably one of the legendary tracks in all the sport and some of the most knowledgeable fans here. We'll take a look at the top fuel qualifiers now. This was the second quickest field ever in NHRA history, behind only the field at Indy last year. Selzy number one for the second time this year. Amato coming off that Dallas win. Bernstein off the Dallas disappointment. Mike Dunn in the Mopar car looking to win one. Eddie Hill is vastly improved. The veteran Pat Dakin is there. And the surprising Steve Smith rounds out this very quick field. That means the 16-car pairings with one against 16, two against 15, and so on. Going to see Selzy's Goliath against Smith's David. The ladies take on one another. It's Pal and Anderson, and Corey hopes to pad that points lead. The B-side features the veterans Amato and Bernstein, and that red-hot rookie, Coletta, takes on Vandergriff in the Jersey's car in the opening round activity. Earlier today, these fans and lots more saw round one of Top Fuel. Couple of the highlights, it is the Budweiser King, and you can bet your bottom dollar there's oil in that baby this week. They had that problem down at Dallas two weekends ago. They have had problems getting Big Red out of round number one. They have failed to do that four races in a row. Make that five races in a row. It wasn't pretty, but Doug Herbert and the snap-on tools machine gets the win, and he, Kenny Bernstein explained his loss to Steve Evans. Kenny, the last thing you expect, I think, was to smoke the tires on this very good racetrack. Not right there. Not right on the starting line. I thought the Bud King uh, prolonged car would get through that part. I was a little suspect out there a ways, but that's a, that's a surprise. But today's weather completely changed from yesterday. We backed it down. We wanted to be safe, but this thing's got a lot of power, and sometimes we just don't harness it properly. <laughs> This can be a humbling sport. Tori McClanahan then in the McDonald's car, even with four wins, has not been able to pull away from Joe Amato in the points battle. Mike Green pulls away from the car as they send Big Red into do battle in round number one with Pat Dake in a rematch of that Atlanta final. Dake had smoked the tires in that when Corey got the win. No smoke here, but the end result's the same thing. Corey Mack gets the win, but just did dodge one from Pat Dake in. Woohoo! Pat Dakin wheeled a wheel. It could have gone either way there for a minute. Yeah, it really could. I ended up having to pedal it. Don't know if it was the right thing to do, but I'll tell you, it was a squeaker down there. I barely caught him. And you heard it. You had to put the fire out yourself. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, safety fire did do a great job, but, you know, they can only take care of so many cars at one time. I'll get it fixed. Earlier in the day, Dave Reef had a chance to preview another first-round matchup. <laughs> One of the most consistent drivers all weekend long has been Kristen Powell in her Team Scandia Reebok car. Pretty sharp looking too, huh? Four 60s all weekend long, including a pair of career bests. She's the fifth qualified car here today. That means she will race the number 12 qualified car of Shelly Anderson, her mentor. The very first time they ever raced in competition, Shelly got the edge. That's why Kristen Powell figures it's her day today. Kristen Powell looking determined. The Parts America Texaco Haviland car in the near lane. Starting a little resurgence over the last couple of races. Last year, three women qualified for this race, Rhonda Hartman being the other one, in addition to Pal and Anderson. On board the Parts America machine, a car length to the top end of the racetrack, and Shelly Anderson at 467, just this side of 300 miles an hour, and she got the win. Some other advancers in round number one. Gary Sells, as expected, took out Steve Smith. Eddie Hill with the win over Mike Dunn. You saw that Corey Mack and Shelley advance. And on the B side of the ladder, Amato pounded Jim Head. Doug Coletta just keeps on marching on. Herbert got the win, and so did Larry Dixon. Let's go join Laura Bird in the pit area with some more Top Fuel stuff. Kristen Powell won this event last year, but lost in the first round side by side with Shelly Anderson. Somebody you've been side by side with one other time, Kristen. You were supposed to have this win, and some people might think that your sister fighting cancer for so many years and being here this weekend could be a distraction. Is there any truth to that? Well, it's obvious that Carrie's the number one priority in our family, and with the drag racing, that definitely comes second, just remotely behind. But um, this week, when we had some troubles, um, we qualified with 60s the whole time, but we had a problem with the burst panel. It cracked during the burnout, and it gave way during the run so that was why we lost and hopefully next time we meet up with Shelly we can beat her folks let me tell you compared to what Carrie's going through a little busted motor isn't the end of the world hey we got funny cars coming up we'll take a look at round one everybody that thinks John Force is gonna win raise your hand
TNN's exclusive coverage of the 29th annual Mopar Parts Nationals is brought to you by Mopar, Chrysler Corporation Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. Funny cars sure are pretty, aren't they? Lots of nice polished fiberglass and pretty paint, but really what they are is pretty wild. Maniacal monsters ready to hit 323 miles an hour in a single bound. Sounds like the stuff of Superman to me. Oh, Superman, that's my cue. Welcome back on TNN Motorsports at the Mopar Parts Nationals in my home state of Englishtown, New Jersey, or New Jersey. Let's take a look at the qualifiers in a very fast, funny car field. Fifth time this year, Cruz at number one. Forced throughout that moonshot at 323, but could still only be number two. Whit Basemore sneaking up in the field, so is Jim Epler with that Easy Care car. Second group features a few surprises, like Corey Lay in the number 10 slot. Nice job. Tony Pedregon had trouble in the number 14, and the Alfred E. Newman memorial car jerry tolliver checks in at number 16 with that mad magazine entry as always lots of folks gathered around the mcdonald's team we'll take a look at them again a little bit later on pairings in the opening round it's tolliver's mad magazine guys trying to stop Cruz. good luck boys you'll need it epler hopes that paul smith can work some of that e-town magic and team winston and whit baseball facing off with frankie pedregon he's coming off that big dallas performance the b-side creasy against fourth third time this year they've gone at it in round number one and the cap tony pedregon match could be pivotal here today because Hendrickon and Force on the same side of the ladder. Let's go back now and take a look at what happened in some of those round one matchups. That's John Medlin. Directs his boy, Tony Pedregon, to the line. The Castrol Syntax Ford machine. Adam Mac Tools and Vistion. And a cast of thousands. The quick check. On the front there, that's what they would like. A quick check of about 490 right here. For the Chevrolet. For the Snake. For Copenhagen. It's not going to happen. Oh, look at Tony Pedregon. Gets the win. It wasn't pretty, but he managed to hold on for the win at 504 and talk to Steve. This car is not often the underdog, but it was against Ron Caps. You know it, I know it, he knew it. Well, when your back's against the wall, you got nothing to lose. So uh, we made a lot of changes. We just wanted to get it down there. We knew if we could, it'd run good, and, and we did. Yes, they did. Here comes the captain of that Castrol fleet. Not that guy. Dale Creasy Jr., three times he gets force in round one. Looks like before and after from an Earl Scheib commercial out there. Watch this. John Forrest with the high beams on, 321.77, backs up that blistering mile-an-hour speed. The hat is coming off, and John, when it runs those kind of numbers, it's like breaking the sound barrier, John, when it runs those kind of numbers. Weird things happen in there. What happened? 321, you backed up the 323. We did. That's, man, that's, and I got to tell you, it's not just the corporate money behind this deal, but it's guys like Austin Coyle. And, you know, I've been lying all weekend saying it didn't really matter about speed, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of nice. So we're really proud of that. But Coyle, Bernie, and Medlin, and Tony, they get credit for that, and I really do mean that sincerely. Thank you. John Force has been on top for a while. Laura's got the story of a guy who's what looking to stage a comeback. <laughs> Jim Epler is a veteran. He's been piloting a funny car for over 10 years, but you told me, Jim, that you haven't had a competitive car since 1993, and you didn't qualify the first two events of this season, but you've gotten incrementally better every single race so far, and now you're qualified eighth. What's the difference? Well, the biggest difference is just putting this team together at the last minute. I got together with Ed Margaretis, the car owner, and I uh, drove for Paul and Mike Smith last year, so we got them on board for the, with the crew chief. And uh, Easy Care came on board for the sponsorship help. And, uh, you know, just getting a new team together took a little bit of time, but I think we got a car that can win. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Jim Epler had a good car in Dallas, went to the semifinals. It's the NEC Communication Solutions car. Garrett Engine on the far side, out of triple I is seven count. Here comes that easy care machine. Jim Epler, he's got the wily Paul Smith, as you mentioned, turning the ranges. Epler smoked the tires, but Dencham punched out those pylons in the middle of the track, and that's not good. And with a limping time, 
of about 11 seconds, Epler got the win. Look at the crowd around John Force. Boy, you win a couple of rounds. You go 323 miles an hour. Everybody wants to get your autograph and shake your hands. Cruz ran 490 in that opening round. Tim Wilkerson took out Randy Anderson. He ran with Baysmore. Team Winston doing well. Corey Lee next to try on the champ. And Tony Pendragon against Chuck Edgels, who has always done well here at this track. A guy that we hope is doing well is standing by in the pits now with Dave Reed. It was four weeks ago today that Tom Hoover had a major clutch explosion that caused the reverse arm to spin freely inside of the cockpit, destroying his left leg. Well, as you can see, he got delirious up in Minneapolis, Healing, and he's back at the races here today to support his crew chief, now driver, Corey Lee. How are you feeling? Just feeling great. Uh, the guys are doing great. The team's coming around right now. They qualified real well. Had a little luck first round here, and uh, we got a new combination right now. We're running a new Cabelco blower with our new car, and uh, I think the guys are off in the right direction. If everything goes right, it'll be about four to five weeks before he gets back in the car. And to make sure that that does not happen again, they've developed a carbon fiber reverse arm that has a designated breaking point at the bottom, so that will never happen again. And our best wishes to Tom Hoover. Hey, don't forget, coming up Friday night is another dirt slinging, wheel banging night with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. Sprint car races fast in the Channel Lock Sprint Classic. Also, log on the web for World of Outlaws trivia. Check it out. Friday night at 8 Eastern on TNN Motorsports, part of TNN's Wild, Wild Web Week. We talked to a lot of drivers and said, what does it take to make a good driver? And we figured, hey, we might as well start right at the top. Just gotta love what you do. Uh... Good crew chief helps. Lots of money. That's what it takes. But uh, I think just really uh, years of experience. I don't believe anybody just falls out and they're just natural at it. A lot of road time. Uh, something I never thought about for 10 years is the fact that you actually learn the racetracks. Little E-Town back for you. Bob Glidden. Won his final big event here in 95. Won the Pro Stock Challenge in 96, by the way. And we'd like to say hi to him. Big Bob Glidden fan, Ron Dilly, recovering from cancer. And a big Bob Glidden fan, I guarantee you, he was here for that race in 1995. Well, we're going to take a look at some Pro Stock. Speaking of Bob Glidden here at the Mopar Parts Nationals. And let's take a look at the way they qualified. Very quick field. Kurt Johnson set the pace at the top of that 690, his first number one of the year. Mike Thomas does well again. So do those Coughlin kids, as we mentioned at the top of the show. Next up, you're going to see on the B side, it's going to be the Bronx Bridge Builder, Bobby Benson. Checking in at number 12. That's a mouthful. How about Greg Anderson, formerly with WJ number 15, and the defending champ, Darrell Alderman, just does sneak in at the number 16 position. So we're going to take a look at the ladder here in our one versus 16 format. It will be Kurt Johnson going off against you got it the dodge boy daryl alderman that'll be one first round matchup dallas winner mike edwards faces troy coughlin local favorite benzik could turn this place on if he could beat osborne the b-side will see yates and schmidt and wj and marnell and a lot of guys coming off that pro stock challenge from yesterday that was won by the way by kurt johnson let's go back and look at pro stocks in round one Kurt Johnson's AC Delco Chevrolet. Biggest win for Chevy in years. Yesterday, this is a brand new day and a brand new ball game. He's got that hot leaving. Darrell Alderman and the Dodge Boy out of Dale Ike stable here in the near lane. The only Dodge really doing well now. Watch this. Alderman just might steal one. Hang on, Kurt. And Darrell Alderman gets the win. Kurt loses the big bucks and obviously not real happy about today's turn of event. You're disgusted, aren't you? That was an expensive loss. It was. You know, the AC Delco Camaro ran so good yesterday, winning the challenge and all. Come out here today, it's a different day. Hooked the left-hand turn, got out of the groove, started shaking. Tried to save it and seen that guardrail and Daryl down there sideways. I'd rather save a car than make a little bit of money. And I'll give you a hint next time, Kurt. Don't go left. Mike Edwards coming off that Dallas win. A marvelous driver, Troy Coughlin, part of the Jags. Two-car teams checked in in the fourth qualifying position. Up at the top, the incremental numbers. Slight advantage, Edwards, in the starting line. Slight advantage win at the finish line. So Dave Reeve had a chance to talk with an interesting competitor we're going to see next. <laughs> You'll recall it was only a short seven months ago that Greg Anderson was tuning Warren Johnson. Well, now Greg Anderson is tuning Greg Anderson. And for the first time ever, he's facing Sunday eliminations head on. Thanks to a solid 699, that's netted him the 15th spot. He will race Mike Thomas in round number one. Now, everyone knows Mike Thomas is fast, 
and weather conditions have changed here today. That means they're going to have to tune this car up if they're going to beat him to the finish line. Greg Anderson, who always wanted to drive a pro stock car, getting his opportunity twice before he'd gone to the sixes, but did it in places where you got to run way in the low 690s just to get in the field. Here he is with a great chance to win a race against Mike Thomas in the Pennzoil car. Can you say whole shot? How about Greg Anderson? Probably got that from hanging around WJ all those years. Well, maybe not, but he was happy about that win. I have interviewed Greg Anderson many times as a crew chief, but never as a whole shot winning driver. Oh my God, I can't believe it, Steve. <laughs> My first race, I qualify and I win first round. Maybe the luck's with us today. You never know what's going to happen. I'm having a blast, though, I can tell you that. Winning is so much fun. Well, in addition to the rounds that you saw, you can see Pete Williams gets a big win over the Cowboy Mark Powick and Mark Osborne ended Bob Benz's day here and sent half the crowd home. Well, maybe not him. Jim Yates took out Steve Schmidt, who had problems and fouled out on the starting line. Well, let's find out what the Dodge Boys thinking about over there in the pit area. Let's check in with Steve Evans. Every race is a pressure cooker. But Daryl Alderman, when your sponsor is the event sponsor, as Mopar is, it's got to be magnified. Certainly, as you know, Mopar don't put any pressure on us at all, but as drivers, we put pressure on ourselves to try to do good for the sponsor. Tough getting in the show. Yeah, qualifying's one thing, you know, and, and then race day's another deal. You know, you come in on Sunday, uh, and if you're 16th qualifier, you got a shot to win this thing. As you prove first round. Yeah, Kurt Johnson's always tough, uh, you know, and I've uh, been running fast this weekend, but that goes to show you, you know, you can go down uh, being number one qualifier. What kind of men or women strap themselves into steel cocoons to be pushed by 6,000 horsepower to 300 miles an hour with a parachute brake for a punishing parking gear? The kind I like to hang out with because Dahl is not in a top fuel driver's vocabulary. Round two, top fuel, next. TNN's exclusive coverage is brought to you by the more than 1,900 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Super 8 Motels, over 1,600 throughout Canada and the United States. Saturday on TNN Motorsports, Gary Sales, will still be signing autographs. No, it's the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Teams as they take their powerful pickups to the high banks of I-70 Speedway near Kansas City. Tony Raines looks to defend his 97 win in the Yellow Freight 200, Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on TNN Motorsports. Let's take a look at round number two in Top Fuel Eliminator. Some great action. Find out who survives. Let's check in with David Reed. You may recall one year ago, Shelly Anderson had a major engine explosion that caused the Parts America crew to re-back half their entire car. Well, thankfully, Shelly did not have anything like that happen this year in round number one. In fact, it was very smooth. A 467, your best time slip for the week, and you guys are picking it up. Well, yeah, we're excited. Uh, we've got Lane Choice up against Corey McLanathan, and we need it. He's been tough all year. He's got lots of wins, and hopefully we'll just go on to the semis. The second time they will go into the quarterfinals, and maybe a first time for that semifinal appearance. Am I allowed to say perky? That's what comes to mind every time I see her smile. On board, the Parts America Texaco Haviland team machine. Shelly Anderson looking to get to the semifinals. They've made steady progress. They can make a big jump right here if they can take out Corey Mann. Wow, that onboard camera, look how quickly Corey Mack disappears. He gets the win and ran a great time in the 460 range. Corey, it kind of looks like your mission today is to beat the other driver, but more importantly, don't beat Corey Mack. That's the whole thing, you know. I mean, we want to keep this points lead. We've got to keep up with the, the Joses, so to speak. And I'll tell you, the way Joes are running, is, it could be his day, but never, never know. We like to race the racetrack on Sunday, not the guy next to us. <laughs> Hey, I like that. Keep up with the Joneses. I wish I'd thought of that. Doug Herbert, Snap-on Tools Machine under the watchful eye of Dick Lay, who won races right here and won Winston Championship by winning at Englishtown. See if he can work that magic against the Miller Lite car from Don Renome Stable. Nope. Dixon, 4.627. Hello, the blue and white Miller Lite car running like gangbusters. 
Team Tenneco, Joe Amato, far side of the racetrack, Doug Coletta. It's a rematch of the Dallas final from just a couple of weekends ago when Coletta may have been the car to beat. But Joe Amato got the win on the whole shot. Good evening, Pete. Joe Amato runs 323.5 miles an hour. That is really fast, Steve. And we knew it had it in there. You know, you can't let a funny car with them big bodies and the heavyweight be one of these kings of the sport. I mean, they're the queens. We're the kings. We have to keep the title. Oh, but they'll love being called the queen. <laughs> Queens of the sport keeps up with the Joes. Man, it's bad when the drivers are funnier than the announcers are. Eddie Hill, Hersey Hill, the Pennzoil Matco Tools Machine. He has been making good, steady progress last couple of weeks. He has got on the far side a very tough customer. Oh, but he gives it away to Team Winston. Eddie Hill fouls out, and to add insult to injury, a career best. 462.5 seconds, but he fouled out in Chelsea gets the win. Working on some stuff over there in the pit area. Let's take a look at the way they're going to match up going into that semifinal. It's Selzy against Corey Mack. They've only met once so far this year. Hey, Corey Mack's been beating up on everybody. Could be a whole new ball game here at English Town in the Mopar Parts Nationals. And on the flip side, it's going to be Joe Amato against Larry Dixon. And Dixon up 1-0 in this short series here at the early part of 1998. Corey Mack's doing well. He is currently the points leader. Makes him a pretty good driver. Let's find out what Corey Mack thinks makes a good driver. I think basically what makes a good top fuel driver is seat time. And I mean, let's face it, some people are meant to do this. Some people are not meant to do this. <laughs> I know a lot of people that say they can do it that when they had the chance really couldn't do it, you know. And, and I think it's basically something like with me, I started when I was 16 years old driving drag cars and I've driven just about everything under the sun. And, and uh, this is what I wanted to be in, a top fuel car. I mean, I want to be the fastest, I want to be the quickest, and I want to be the best. know what it's like to ride in a fuel funny car on board with Dean Scooses, Matt Coke Tools, and Team Mopar. Whee! It's like a ride down at Six Flags down the street. Six Flags wishes they had lines like we have here. Folks over there signing a few autographs, shaking a few hands, kissing a few babies. Let's go back and take a look at round two of funny car action. And it's going to be Chuck Etchells, who won his first race here back in 1990 with Paul Smith as the crew chief. Coming off that really disappointing, bizarre weekend in Dallas two weekends ago. The Kendall Mama Rosa Pizza Super Winch car. We are on board. Great shot. That's the parachute lever you see up at the top part of the picture. Tony Pendergon, second weekend out. The new livery, the Castrol Syntac colors, Mac Tools, Vistion Ford, and a very talented crew that will send him into battle. A couple of biggies here. Pendergon would love to advance to the semi finals where he could potentially face the boss, John Force. Chuck Edgels, of course, hopes that doesn't happen. Pendragon off first, but look at Chuck Edgels. Brilliant pass. 4.91, 308 miles an hour. Way to go, Chucky. Your first big win was here. Uh, Tim Richards has got this place dialed. Well, you know, it's, right now we're looking good, but there's so many great cars out here, Steve. You know how that is, and uh, we'll just take one round at a time. That's all you can do. Well, next round you get John Force, and that's okay. Who says? Has he won already? <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Jim Epler's Easy Care Machine against the Interstate Batteries car. Well, Edgel's ran 491. Cruz Pedregon's the baddest dude on the block, at least in qualifying. Let's see what kind of number he can throw out against Epler. Red light and good night, and look at this. Epler was there for the taking. I mean, Cruz was the favorite, but the Hot Rod Magazine Interstate Batteries car out of here with that red light start, and Jim Epler with 11.25. Probably not gonna get lane choice in the semifinals, but he probably doesn't care. Watch on the near side as Cruz leaves way early. Actually, doesn't make any difference how early you leave. You get that red light and your day is over. Cruz is probably not real happy, and that's probably an understatement. Cruz Pedagon beating yourself up, but only you know what happened inside the race car. I don't know. Just don't know what happened. My foot just left, and that's all, that's all it was. Maybe wanting to win just too badly? Yeah. Uh, I really don't know. I have, I, I have no idea why, Steve. Sorry to say it happened. Wow. 
Third race in a row that the green machine fails to get past round number two, and that can be devastating in those points battles. It's the resurgent Whit Bazemore with his older car. Tim Wilkerson, maybe the best team on tour, not to win yet in the funny car category in the John Costanza car. Wilkerson way out in front. Oh, look at this. Whit Bazemore ran him down, and by a thousandth of a second, he got the win. Whit, take the fan at home out of the Barco lounger and into the Sport Mustang for that run. Yeah, it's uh, the old car's running pretty well now, and uh, not a moment too soon. I'm happy for the team, for Team Winston. Tell us about the run, if you can. Well, I saw Timmy out there uh, at half track. I think I saw his whole car, and I thought, geez, <laughs> you know, we, we might be in trouble here, but he must have had a mechanical problem. But, uh, you know, our car, we didn't make a mistake. It stayed hooked up. It's running pretty good. And uh, I tell you, the entertainment, the run before, that was worth waiting back there to see. <laughs> I think I saw him at half track. I think it sold him about a thousand feet. Great win for Team Winston. Here comes John Force against Corey Lee. That's the pioneer art of entertainment machine. Let's see if they can grab on from Force. When Force is running 488 at 321 miles an hour, and he backs up that speed record. That is one bad hot ride, sports fans. Let's take a look at those semifinal pairings as they clean up the place here, getting set for all those semifinals. Epler and Whit Bazemore. Whit leads 1-0, and Jim Epler, well, he really hasn't shown his true hand yet after that limping down the racetrack in that last run. And the other pair, John Force and Chuck Etchells, the heavyweights. It's like a heavyweight fight, folks. We're going to be ready to rumble a little bit later on. Take a little look at a factoid here. Did you know, as we're taking a look at those 323 mile an hour speed runs, Billy Meyer took top speed back in 1982. It has been done 13 times since then, by the way. Although the Funny Car National Record has never been higher than the top fuel national record. Welcome back, everybody, to the mecca of speed here this weekend. Old Bridge Township Raceway Park, Englishtown, New Jersey. And the crowd getting ready for semis just like you are. This week on TNN's Wild Wild Web Week, it's your opportunity to ask the experts about fishing. Learn a new step or chat with one of your favorite stars. All you need is a phone or computer, and you're connected. Check out all the great shows this week on TNN's Wild Wild Web Week. Let's go back and look what happened in round number two of Pro Stock. WJ, the Goodwrench Service Plus machine on the far lane. Looked like he was going to run away and hide from the gang in the Pro Stock points chase. Falling on hard times in a couple of the last races. See what he can do here against Jake Coughlin and the Oldsmobile. On board with the Jags car to the top end, Jakey gets the win. And for three of the last four races, Warren Johnson can't get out of round number two. <laughs> Here comes the Dodge. Boy, Darrell Alderman and Team Mopar for Dale Ike's stable. They ran well at Dallas. Running well here is Alderman. Mike Dunn's Mopar car, gone. Scott Jeffrey on had problems, didn't qualify. Ed Williams, who qualified well up in the field, over there on the far side, a very steady performer with the Oldsmobile. How about Pete Williams beat Alderman out of the game, but Darrell Alderman holds on and gets the win. With a preview of another round two matchup, here's Laura Bird. Mike Edwards and Mark Osborne share something in common. One event wins so far this season and very few words to talk about it. These are the guys that just do the hard work and let the results speak for them. Mike's come so far as not qualifying the first two events of this season to qualifying second and beating Kurt Johnson in the final round at the last race in Dallas. When you ask Mike what got him from the first race to where he is today, he's likely to just point at his right foot and smile. At least he's not trying to be funnier than we are. It's the Dick Sherman team. A Mike Thomas motor. Mark Osborne, the wheel man. A brilliant driver. Great owner in Dick Sherman taking on Mike Edwards, running for the Mary Lou Kite. The legacy lives on. It says on the side in reference to John Kite, their late car owner. Two of the best, dead even out of the gate. Edwards, by 
like that much, gets the win. 696 beats a 6.98 and a great quarter mile sprint. So Greg Anderson thinks this pro stock stuff is easy, huh? Well, let's see what you can do in round number two against the reigning Winston champ, the split fire king, Pontiac of the resurgent Jim Yates. Got those carburetors straightened out. Got the GM chassis folks on hand here. Got a great driver and team. Could be trouble for Greg Anderson. Yep, Greg spun the tires, shut it down off the starting line. Hey, it's no disgrace when you lose to the two-time Winston champ. He wins it with a 695. Jimmy H, tell me about this racetrack. Is lane choice important? How's the track holding up for pro stock? Lane choice seems to be real critical right now. Seems to be some kind of problem with the left lane. A lot of cars are having trouble getting down. I don't know what happened to Greg got run, but a lot of cars are getting loose in the middle out there and shutting down. He's already made one lane swap in the first two rounds, has Yates. He can keep getting lane choice. He can put the guys in the bad lane if there is one. Look at that matchup. Edwards, Alderman, the Dodge guy trying to back-to-back. -to -back. He won this puppy in 1997, his last win. And the other semi, it's Jim Yates and Jay Coughlin. Yates leads 1-0, but I'll tell you, that Coughlin kid can flat-out drive a race car. That's the way they're going to match up. What makes a good driver? Well, we figured we'd go ask the always opinionated Warren Johnson. There's a lot of guys that uh, can go out there, left the clutch out on time, but a lot of them have a lot of problems getting down the other to the other end of the track if it's loose or the car isn't set up properly and they don't have the ability to convey who's doing the work on the car, what's wrong with it. You know, we've got people out there that are claim to be drivers and they can't tell a piston from a petunia. We have given away a lot of money this week, and I say we, it's like me and the folks from MBNA are close personal friends. What a marvelous world record program they have put together. Matt Hines won $10,000 already. Warren Johnson, $25,000 from the good folks at MBNA for blasting that world record down in Gainesville earlier this season. Hey, Cruz Pedregon, you talk about a big winner. How'd you like to heft up $60,000? Gainesville, Virginia, he was just running away with the money. And Joe Amato, 50 grand, twice he has backed up that world record and the folks from MBNA still giving out lots of money. I'm not really giving out to those folks, but giving it out to the guys and gals maybe that could set some more world records. And we still got lots of money up for grabs. 25 grand in Top Fuel and Funny Car. Somebody could do it here this weekend. So thanks to the folks at MBNA for all the great cash con contributions in their world record club. Let's get an update now. Let's go into the pit area and talking with Top Fuel driver Gary Selzy. Here's Steve Evans. Thank you, Bob. Last year, Gary Selzy won race after race. Gary Selzy won the Winston Championship. Gary Selzy, Rookie of the Year, got invited to all the A parties. This year, hello, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's been uh, it's been a season like we expected to have last year. And, you know, things just haven't gone right. We had a new car, and everything that Alan did to the car, it just wouldn't react or would overreact. And so we brought the old one out, and we're starting to get some results. Who handles this better, you or the Johnson fam? I don't know that either one of us handle it great, but, you know, we, we're used to winning. We like to win. And actually, we just bent the old car, and we had to pull this one out, and it seemed like everything matched. So, you know, it was kind of an accident. And worst of all, they took your Harley away from you. Yeah, when I signed up with Tim Winston, they said that no motorcycles because Whit Bazemore had fell off of his. Now that we've got Angel Sealing as a teammate, I've already talked to Arlen Ness about maybe building me another one, but we'll see how my delivery is on getting that. After qualifying number one here, do you feel you waited a little too long to bring old Red out of the Raptors? Well, you know, you never know, Steve. When you, you're trying to be ahead of the pack, you got to try different things. and. You know, sometimes it doesn't work, but I'm glad we pulled it out when we did because now we can make a charge at it. If you're late off the starting line and lose a race or something like that happens, can you put it behind you or do you go to bed and run that race over and over? I live with it for a long time. I still sting over getting beat on a whole shot in Seattle a year ago. So, yeah, unfortunately, I carry it on my shoulders for a long time. But it looks like things are turning around for you. Hopefully. We'll, we're going to give it all that we got. And David Reef has yet another sit-down guest, and this is one busy guy in motorsports, Dave. Uh, busy is, is an understatement, Steve. I'm standing with one of the most successful men on the planet. That, of course, is the coach, Joe Gibbs. He's a three-time Super Bowl winner. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame just 1996. He has three very successful race teams, and he spends a little time in a TV booth. Whew. Doesn't get much busier <laughs> than that, does it? Joe, where does the love of racing come from? I think um, I got hooked in high school, and I probably like a lot of people out there. At some point, if you start working on cars, and I had street rods, and 
And uh, once you start fixing, working, playing with cars, you get hooked. I was hooked the rest of my life. I was a race fan the rest of my life. Even though I went off into coaching, I always dreamed about getting back in auto racing. Now, when you got these three teams, uh, what was the plan? Did you think it would be this successful? Uh, no, not really. I knew I was getting an extremely tough sport, and we've had our we've had our tough knocks. Now we've had some tough times with our race teams, but we're really proud this year. We think we got uh, obviously two great teams here, and we think Bobby Labonte is doing great on the interstate battery side over there. So uh, for McDonald's and Interstate and Hot Rod, it's been a thrill for us with the race team this year, and uh, to have the top fuel car in first place and the funny cars making a real uh, push and a real run at the championship on that side, uh, we're really thrilled. What's been the most difficult thing and probably what's pleased you the most? I'd say the most difficult thing, um, auto racing is uh, a lot like football in that it's people related. And so the most difficult thing is, is being able to accumulate the right people. And I think it's, you know, it takes you a while working with the guys. We've been very fortunate here with the top fuel side and the funny car side, but accumulating the right people on both sides of our race team and getting the right people together, then you become successful. And so I'd say it's always working with people. That's one of the hardest things in the world because picking them is hard because you're never quite sure what you're getting. And uh, then keeping them happy is hard. And uh, but it's also the only worthwhile thing in the world. And I think with our race team, we got great people and that makes a difference. It's the people, it's not owner, it's not cars. You win with people. Now I understand you're gonna warm one of these things pretty quick here, huh? I kept talking to everybody and I said, man, hey, I drove one of these things, all that stuff. I really didn't drive one of these things. I drove a gas dragster, went about 135 miles an hour. So they finally called my bluff. They said, okay, we're putting you in one and we'll at least warm it up. So. Uh, well, let's see how that goes. They'll probably roll my eyeballs backwards. Well, with football in the winter and racing taking up all three of the other months, this guy's one busy guy. Probably doesn't spend a lot of Sundays at home, Laura. Yeah, and I'm with another busy guy, Dave. In fact, John, I got a congratulations. Send my congratulations to you first for that new speed record, 323 miles an hour. You even had the top fuel guys just completely out of sorts. Yeah, I think we rattled them a little bit with that 323. Uh, we did secure the, the funny car speed record at 317, but we're excited. Uh, just got to win some rounds here to try to stay in the points lead. Now, Friday night when you did that 323, can you describe for us a little bit what the sensation was? Well, it took my Mustang out there, and it, she rattles a little bit down there. She wants to get a little bit loose down about 800 foot, and really jumped up on the tire, rumbled a lot, but uh, she went through there and uh, shut her off. Motor looked brand new, so we're excited and uh, just going to try to keep doing that. You know what Amato called you? What? The queen of speed. Well, leave it to, leave it to Amato to say that, and uh, like I told, I heard that, and he'll have 25... Uh, drivers over there wanting to talk to him, funny car drivers, but until he took that record, we, like they said, we were queen for a day, so that was kind of nice. Yeah, he said he was king for a day. You know, John, I think people see you win so much that they think it's easy, but you haven't had a win this year, despite the fact that you're at the top of the standings. Well, no, this whole business is tough. You know, we're going to race here, and we're going to go to Lebanon Valley Thursday night, and then over to Tasca Ford and Providence Friday and Saturday. That's how I keep moving, because if I stop, well, I just fall asleep. It's tough on me, but winning's tough, and uh, yeah, the fans only see you on TV, they don't see it in between the week. Well, they see 13 wins in 1996, and they think it looks easy. Well, that was a tough year, but that was a very lucky year. Coyle, Bernie, Medlin, uh, they did everything uh, right. Austin Coyle is unbelievable with his hot rod, but we're excited to bring Castrol and Syntec out here and all the other sponsors. Visteon come on board just to do a real good job and make an impression. There you go, Bob. It's not easy. I just sit here and chuckle every time I listen to him talk. What a deal. He doesn't even know that he set the record at that 321 mile per hour charge. Wow. New class on the tour this year. It's that pro stock truck category. You're riding on board here with one of the team Mopar trucks. They've already had a win. David Nickens, first race, first win for the Dodgers. We'll take a look at the truck, see how they did here this weekend, and we come back to Old Bridge Township Raceway Park. May 31st on TNN Motorsports, the world's best drag racers tackle a track they've never seen. It's a new race in a new place. The Chicago area is not only going to rock, it's going to roar. Look out, Chi-Town. Find out who's going to put the wind in the Windy City. See the inaugural Fram Route 66 Nationals, Sunday, May 31st at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. And it's all on TNN Motorsports. So far in 1998, Pro Stock Truck has found one driver on top, Larry Cobb, who has had the quickest truck in both events so far. But that quickness didn't translate to a pair of wins. 
A disappointing red light at the season opener in Houston gave Randy Daniels a pass into the finals where David Nickens became the historic first ever winner of NHRA's newest class. One month later in Atlanta, Cop controlled his clutch foot, avoided the red light blues, and took the win over fellow Chevrolet driver John Lincolnfelter. Cop's consistency and quickness have him atop the Winston Pro Stock Truck point standings, but with 10 races remaining on the calendar, his early lead is not that secure. Pro Stock Truck is a really neat class. Hey, Philadelphia Phillies shirt. You don't see many of them at the racetrack. Heck, you don't even see many of them in Philadelphia. David Nickens leads the way in qualifying in the Pro Stock Truck. Look at the top couple. Jerry Haas, awesome. There's Cop right there in the number three slot. And how about John Lingenfelder? Man, the top half of that field loaded. And yes, it is. Ronnie Sox. The Fords round out a 16 truck field with Roy Hill and Sandra Sykes coming in in the number 15 and 16 spot. Crowd enjoyed the trucks here. Now they qualify Thursday and Friday. Run eliminations on Saturday. Nickens and Sandra Sykes. How about Sox and Henderson? Good match up there. And John Lingenfelder running out of the four position. He'll be tough to handle here in eliminations. Roy Hill will try to steal one from Jerry Haas. Little Ford Chevrolet get together. The Pinelli gang, another immaculate race vehicle that they've got. Cop and McConnell and Tidwell and Eaton will take a look at that round one matchup coming up here in just a second. In round one of the Pro Stock trucks, small cubic engines, gasoline carburetors, manually shifted machines. Other than that, just like the Pro Stock cars, flash of the yellows and the green light, and you will get it on. It'll be Henderson and Sox, Ronnie Sox of the famed Sox and Hard team. Ronnie was first out of the gate, riding on board with Bill Henderson out of Evergreen, Colorado. Man, that was close. Henderson just did get the win, advanced to round two. You got some big name stars out here in addition to guys like Ronnie Sox and John Lingenfelder, a lot of guys coming up from competition eliminator category. Grant Lewis and Bob Pinella, both running with the Chevrolets, the great S10 pickups. Pinella Jr. from the legendary Bob Pinella stable on the far lane. Grant Lewis, who won three eliminators in one year and has won in five different classes, trying to make it six. He wins in that Chevy S10 pickup. This is only the third run we've had on this truck. We missed the first two qualifying runs. We, uh, we're picking up every round, and uh, I think we're going to be there. Uh, we've got a tough task now because we get into all the faster trucks, but you never know how the ball's going to roll. Along with Jaggy Coughlin, Grant Lewis may be one of the best guys ever to drive in the sportsman category. Stepping up to the pro stock trucks. Todd Patterson with a Chevrolet. Randy Daniels, his dad Garley, a former Winston champion. Chevrolet S10 near lane. It's the Dodge in the far lane. Riding on board there in the Mopar, but he falls back, and Randy Daniels picks up the win, 772, 175, another win for Chevrolet. The Atsco remanufacturing power steering folks in the far lane. That is Craig Eaton as he comes up. He's driving the Dodge Dakota. Scott Tidwell in the near lane. Another one of the great, powerful S10 pickups from Chevy. Qualified in the number six slot, Scott Tidwell. Was beaten off the line. Craig Eaton trying to steal one. Yes, indeed. He gets the win. It's 778, a big round one upset. You know, it's it's not much different what I drove in comp. So, you know, but it's, you know, it's new and 410 Street's new and, you know, but uh, we're optimistic. Everything's looking good here, first outing. So. Craig Eaton and Father Dale do a great job sponsoring the Atsco race out in Arizona, their home neck of the woods, and running these pro stock trucks. John Lingenfelder, the summit racing machine in the near lane. Brad Jeter, South Carolina, Battle of S10s. Lingenfelder, one of the best when it comes to building horsepower with small block Chevys, gets the win at 770. Brad Jeter had 500s in the bank off the line, just not enough. And you get a chance to take a look at David Nickens. He will match up right here with Sandra Sykes. Nickens, your number one qualifier. Sykes in the Ford. 358 cubic inch Ranger. 
You're riding on board with David Nickens, and that usually means you're going to be riding in the lead. 769, 175 miles an hour. That's the best time around number one. And David Nickens gets the win over Sandra Sykes. Riding on board in the Team Mopar. Dodge Dakota, David Nickens wins in just about everything. I tell you, the second and third qualifying sessions, we tried some stuff that didn't work, and we kind of got back to baseline, and it, it worked real good for us last night. And if if we can uh, adhere to the track all day, we might have a shot of winning this race. Another former champion in the competition eliminator category. Here comes Jerry Haas, number two qualifier. Roy Hill, he just driving down at the drag racing school in North Carolina. Let's see how well he can drive. Doesn't look good when the teacher fouls out. Have to keep him after school. Jerry Haas rips a 770, 175 with that Chevy S10 pickup. Love the paint job. Of course, Haas and Lingenfelder were the guys that were part of the test program last year. Riding with Roy while he red lights. Not a happy ride with Roy, but he'll be back at the next stop on the tour. The Fords picking up their performance. They will be factors. It's Larry Cobb. He's got that Bill Grumpy Jenkins motor in there. The Grump can flat out make some horsepower. Larry Cobb can drive another former Winston champ in the sportsman ranks. Dave McConnell trying to grab it on the line. Cobb gets him at the quarter mile mark. 772, 175, and Larry Cobb's Jenkins S10 prepared Chevy goes in to round number two. The crowd loves the trucks, whether here at Old Bridge Township, Raceway Park, or anywhere you're going to see them on the tour. Catch them out. And you can see them right here on TNN. It's the Nashville Network. Look at that. Way cool. A lot of talent in Connecticut, gang. Truck lovers are as loyal to their favorite make as car lovers are to theirs. That's what makes NHRA's Pro Stock Truck Class so much fun. It's intermark war between Ford, Chevy, and Dodge, featuring the most outrageous haulers ever created. If you are keeping score at home, you know that five of those Chevy S10 pickups advanced. We'll take a look at that round two in just a moment. Don't forget, Daily Helping to Race It. Romance and Roscoe P. Coltrane. It's the Dukes of Hazard. See it now at a new time. Weekdays at 5 Eastern right here on America's Country Home. TNN. Well, if you followed that, you know five Chevys advance. That means the three of something else had to advance, and they were Dodges out of that opening round. Here comes John Lincolnfelder. There's a guy that's run 200 miles per hour in a street legal Corvette. That's spooky. Randy Daniels to challenge. Number four and five qualifiers. Lingenfelder was the quicker of the two in the opening round of the competition. John Lingenfelder and that Summit sponsored S10 first out of the gate. Not good news for Daniels. He's got troubles. Lingenfelder 776 at 170. And the quiet spoken John, happy about going to the semis. Well, we knew the track conditions would be worse, and uh, you know the track temperatures up 20 degrees from the previous round. So, you know, we soften up the clutch and just hope to get hope to get down the track. There's a guy that has won 13 national events in sportsman classes. John Langenfeld, who's been doing this for a long while. Larry Cop takes on Craig Eaton. Cop with the Chevrolet. Craig Eaton with the Dodge. Little manufacturer's rivalry right here. Cop's been the hottest guy on the circuit, as David Reed told us. Right here, out of the gate, Craig Eaton. Nice start, top end, too much grumpy power. 771 for Cop, 174 the speed. Eaton's Dodge right there with him at 783. Hey, you got to fix all those Louvred Finnegan pins and stuff at the back of the truck before you send it into new battle. Grant Lewis on the far side, Jerry Haas. There is Chevrolet S10s. Oh, baby, was Jerry Haas late out of the game? How late was he? Well, you never ask. Grant Lewis is 787. 
Beach Dairy High 773. Advantage a tenth and a half off the line. And that can be this. All dives right here. The Mopar folks know that they will have at least one in the semifinals. Riding on board with David Nickens. Pull that bad boy into high gear and get the win. 772 at 173. Nickens goes to the semis again. It's a big win for us because we're trying to garnish points right now and get back in the lead for this championship. And uh, Bill Henderson's done an incredible job and he's made great strides here this weekend. And he. He's going to be a serious contender, but we got to do what we got to do for Team Mopar and Dodge to get in the winner's circle. David, you are the last remaining Team Dodge Mopar in the truck competition. To get to the finals, you got to take out John Lingenfelder. Two tremendous races on the NHRA Winston circuit. And the other semifinal, it is the red hot. Can anybody stop Larry Kopp against Grant Lewis? A couple of guys that have gone at it for years in the sportsman ranks. More pro stock trucks and stuff coming up. TNN's exclusive coverage of the 29th Annual Mopar Parts Nationals is brought to you by Mopar, Chrysler Corporation Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. With this weekend's event, only the third of the season for Pro Stock Trucks, they're so new, we decided to talk to the fans and see how big of fans they are. I like the trucks. They're cool. You think it's cool to see trucks out here? Yes, it is. Good competition between the Dodges, the Chevys, and the Fords. And... Yeah, yes, I, yeah, I think it's real good, yes. Something different, yeah, small blocks, yeah. They're good. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. Can you get me one? <laughs> There's one smart aleck in every group, you know. See, the worst part about that is Laura said, yes, I can. We're going to take a look at those Pro Stock Truck semifinals, find out if it'll be an all Chevy deal in the finals, or can that Dodge survive? Can you get me one? The Summit Racing Machine, Lingenfelder on the far side, David Nickens, number one qualifier here in the near lane. David Nickens, just a master when it comes to driving any vehicle. See what he does here on the line against the Summit vehicle. Wow. Stunning. David Nickens fouled out by a long shot. I mean, a 144 red light. That's like leaving yesterday. Well, actually, it was yesterday. The Summit Racing Machine of John Lingenfelder, 796, the time notwithstanding. He is our first finalist. Larry Kopp and the G-Force Machine. His wife, Susan, who's been with him for a long while, used to drive an Opal GT in Comp Eliminator. Grant Lewis, who drove just about anything. Grant is also driven in pro stock. Now he's in pro stock truck. Now he's in trouble. Cop with a 428 reaction time. 400 would be perfect. And then a 776 just pouring it on at the top end of the racetrack. So a couple of the big guns go out in the finals. Hey, another little kid. Hey, can you buy me one? No, just thought I'd ask. Take a look at those final round uh, pairings. It's going to be Cop and Lingenfelder. Hey, look at Larry Cop. He's whitewashed the speed merchant here a couple of times. We've had the finals yesterday, and Steve Evans was with me in the booth. Jason Baffer was at the end of the track, and here's how we called it yesterday. Absolutely two of the best at running these pro stock trucks and two guys that duked it out for years down in the sportsman ranks, especially in Comp Eliminator. The awesome power of John Lingenfelder, the brilliant driving and not bad power of Larry Cobb. What they thought. Here's some good news from the pits of John Lingenfelder in the semifinals when we saw what we thought was a blown motor and he almost crossed the center line after Nickens had red lighted. It was an oil line that came up that was easily fixed. But Lingenfelder knows that he got a gift when that horrible red light occurred from David Nickens, uncharacteristic of that driver. Yep, top already with the win on the tour in the very short history of the pro stock trucks and John Lingenfelder running out of Summit Racing, teammate with Mark Powell and the guy that makes all those spiffy big 200 mile per hour Chevrolet Corvette. Should be good race and Bill Grumpy Jenkins a big influence on the Larry cop truck absolutely
late advantage, Larry Kopp. Langenfelder drifts near the center line, and Larry Kopp wins for the second time in three starts on the tour. Larry Kopp gets the win, and a 770, 175 miles an hour. Lingenfelder right there with him till about the 1,000-foot mark. Did a little sachet job. Goes 788, slows to 150, and too much grumpy horsepower and a good driving job by a former world champion, Larry Kopp. Absolutely. It's incredible with the power level of these pro-stock trucks that they can get that loose, that they're making that kind of power down there. Of course, it's a very hot day, as we've talked about, and the track is pretty tricky right there. He had to lift. Yep, it was probably over right about then, but we will never know because John Langenfelder could not keep on the gas. And Larry Cott was on the gas from the start to the finish. Speaking of the finish, here's Jason. Well, Larry Kopp has been absolutely dominating in the last two races, and he has got another win under his belt. I uh, just don't know what to say. Thank everybody. Uh, Albert Clark at Clark Chevrolet. He's one of my best friends, my best, he's my best buddy. And my wife, Susan, Stevie Johns, Bill Jenkins. Uh, we got a new sponsor, Krauss Construction, on board right now, and I just, uh, I'm just so happy. <laughs> You're driving pretty good, too. You got him off the line. Well, I'm here to do my job, and if I do my job, Bill tells me I can win the races. So as long as I do that, he says we can win. So here we are again. <laughs> this guy is going to be strong this season in the truck class, guys. Larry Kopp won English Town in 77 and 1981 in Modified Eliminator and in 1998 in Pro Stock Truck. We got a look at the semifinals in Pro Stock Cars coming up in just a bit. Don't go away. And speaking of Pro Stock Cars, what's it take to be a good driver one of them, Jim Yates? You know, it, it takes a lot of patience because the success is so hard to come by in Pro Stock. You just have to be patient and stay with it. It takes a real good team behind you. You know, the best drivers out here that don't have good teams can't do well. You got to have a good team. You got to be a good consistent driver. You know, if you're going to shift high, they can always change the light in the car to adapt for that, but you got to be consistent. Pro Stock Car, the most competitive class there is. It's all a game of timing. Bring it to the line, be on time, spend the rest of the afternoon on the trailer. Hey, Daddy, can you buy me one? Oh, I'm sorry. Mopar Parts Nationals, Old Bridge Township Raceway Park, semifinals in Pro Stock just a little while ago. And here's how they went. Mike Edwards, the John Kite Racing Team against the defending champion right here, Darrell Alderman. One final for Darrell last year, one win right here at English Town in New Jersey. Edwards coming off that brilliant performance in Dallas two weekends ago. with the Dodge boy, Rear and Morrison, horsepower at the top end. Edwards, a hundredth in the bank out of the starting gate, 697. Beats Alderman's game effort of 699. Second weekend in a row, Mike Edwards into the championship final. Jim Yates resurging after the DNQ in Virginia against the Jags boys. Jaggy Jr. got drag racing in his blood against the split fire, Pete Pontiac. Look at Yates, great reaction time, beat the kid off the line, Jakey got him in the corner mile mark, he wins it at 696, Jakes goes to the finals. Let's check in now with Dave Reed. Well, Bob, the guy that won four different national events in four different categories almost went to the finals in two here alone today. He just got knocked out in Superstock, that's why we're down at the far end, but hey, what a great race against Yates. He left on you, but you ran better than him. Yeah, it, uh, it was a good run. It was a little loose in the middle, but uh, he beat us in Pomona in the final by uh, less than a thousandth. I guess the, the tables turned a little bit there, and and, uh, and we got by him by the, by the same margin, so we couldn't be more excited. He'll be racing Mike Edwards in the final. Steve Evans is standing by in that pit. I am indeed, and this is Mike Edwards' car owner. This is Mary Lou Kite, and what a hoot going into your second final round. You just hope for the same result in Dallas. I hope so. Going up against Jeggy is going to be a tough deal. He's a great driver, and I'm just hoping that Mike makes it and outruns him. <laughs> well, let's remember, Mike won it on a hole shot in Dallas, Bob. Two great drivers going at it in the finals. Mike Edwards trying to become the first driver since Alderman at the start of 95 to win back-to-back -back races other than guys named Yates, 
and Johnson. That's a long time. Could be quite a weekend for Mike Edwards. They've gone at it once so far this season, and Coughlin leads it one nothing. It should be some shootout in the championship round. The crowd's settling in. We're going to take a look at some more racing action, and we got all the finals coming up right here on TNN Motorsports. Well, John Forrest can pull into that parking spot anytime he wants, and you better get out of the way because he's going to pull it very quickly. The fans just love John here, and why not? He's the new record holder. Our next NHRA race on TNN is coming up in just two weeks. Check out the new stop on the NHRA Tour. It's the inaugural Fram Route 66 Nationals, May 31st, 6 Eastern, right here on TNN Motorsports. They tell us that is some race facility. Get your tickets, folks. They're going quickly. And that's not a hype. Semis, funny car, strange to see Jim Epler. It's like, which one of these guys doesn't belong? Epler with Force Edgels. Jim Epler and Paul Smith going to show that Easy Care car does indeed belong. See if they can take out Team Winston. Epler driving away to a career best. Back-to-back -back weeks, back-to-back -back career best. 4.93 for Epler. He goes into the championship round. He was the first guy to run a funny car over 300. Chuck Edgel's the first guy to run one in the fours. That would be a historic meeting. Of course, John Force hopes that that doesn't take place. The Castro Ford, it's Chevrolet and Kendall in the far lane. Two primetime players. Edgel smoke. See ya, Chuck. John Force, the win, 488, 319 miles an hour. That's one bad hot ride. Let's go to day three. Well, I'll tell you, John Force is sure commanding a crowd down here. Great weekend, all weekend long, big numbers, but I'm sure the critical thing was making sure you got that lane choice in the semis. Well, that was critical. We really have to be careful. Uh, Paul Smith, really savvy on these racetracks, match racer like ourselves, and, and Epler's a good driver, so let's we'll see what happens. Should be a pretty good race. John Force, a tall challenge for Jim Epler, who's standing by with Steve Evans. Well, actually, that is Paul Smith who wrenched Jim Epler to that amazing 493 in the semifinal round. And, Jim, I think Whit Bazemore underestimated you based on those earlier kind of staggering numbers. Well, I don't know. You know, uh, we've run 495 before, and we were real lucky in two rounds. So uh, the 493 wasn't a huge surprise. We dropped an exhaust valve, though, and uh, this car is definitely capable of running any quicker. John Forrest will not underestimate you. He is loaded. No, he is loaded, I guarantee you. He hasn't won in a few years, but uh, or if, <laughs> I haven't won in a few years. He hasn't won in a few races, so it's going to be a real exciting final. I'm real excited about it. Paul Smith says this car will run an 80. He'll need it, Bob. Paul Smith took Etchells to the title here in 90. Epler, by the way, hasn't won since 1993, if indeed you want to follow that stuff. John Force just got beats up on everybody here, but it's a whole new ball game coming into the final. Epler's last win in 93, by the way, he beat John Force in the semifinal, so he's not afraid of it. Little did you know stuff here as we get set to educate you and bring you into the final rounds. Don Perdome just about owned this thing. Back in those years, he beat Billy Meyer, Dale Armstrong, and Mike Dunn to win those three races. How about that, Jazz? You're watching TNN, America's country home. here at E-Town if they'd like to get behind the wheel of a top fueler. You go like that, and then you pull a chute, and you go like that. <laughs> that's, how, that's very good. That's a good description, right? Awesome. Are you kidding? It, it scares the hell out of me just thinking about it, really. That's, that's too daggone fast for me. Unbelievable. Would not even get in one. Hey, if the lottery come around, I'd have to take that ride if I could. Wow. That's all I could say. Coming down from a roller coaster on the down drop, your stomach just uh, it's come, trying to come out of your mouth. Uh, I couldn't even imagine. My brain would hurt. <laughs> but will you buy me one? That's the big question here. We're going to take a look at our semifinals and top fuel eliminator. Coming up in just a bit, all the finals right here on CNN Motorsports. Back in the semifinals, I mean to tell you, sports fans, it's like a who's who of top fuel. Corey McClanathan, the McDonald's, says everything is okay. Earlier, he told us what it takes to be a good driver. You need a feel for the race car. Alan Johnson, Team Winston, Gary Selzy, resurgent, their best showing of the 1998 racing season. This one ought to be fun. Oh, 
but none of you see that. Corey blows up. Selzy a red light. We've had Cruz. We've had Hill. We've had Selzy all red lights. That is unbelievable. 469, Corey Mack into the finals. Would he take on Gio Amato and the Proc Rocket for Team Tenneco or Larry Dixon who won this thing in his rookie year? Amato trying to put back-to-back -back wins on the board and close the gap on Corey Mack. Right now, he just wants to keep pace with Corey who's already in the final. That's how you win five Winston championships. Amato out drives him and goes to the finals. Let's go to Dave Reed. Well, Bob, in a weekend that's seen John Force go 323, Jimmy Proc, who tunes Joe Amato, has been equal to the challenge. 323 plus a little bit more, but I know that's nothing you guys are concerned about. You want to go to the finals and chase that big red car. Yeah, we do. You know, the, the records, you don't try to set records. They just happen. You know, our cars run close to, it's run 322. You know, today things worked out. It ran a little better, but we're definitely more concerned with the, the racing and going the rounds. And, you know, Corey's kind of had our number here lately, so hopefully today we'll be able to turn the tables. Well, let's go over and see who Steve Evans is with. Probably somebody in the Mickey D's camp. I am in the McDonald's camp, and that is Mike Green. He and the crew have put a brand new bullet in this car for Corey Mack to try to shoot Joe Amato. You got the lucky break you almost always need against Selzy. Yeah, you really do. I mean, just being lucky in this sport is part of the deal, and this year we've had the luck. We really needed it. But I'll tell you, it's uh, it's definitely paid for. We've had a few uh, little carnage here, a few motors sitting around. I'm sure Mike Neff and Brian Hughes are going to be awfully busy next week. They're our motor guys, but I think they'll sacrifice one more if we have to. <laughs> Hang on and sit low, buddy. Bob Fry? Amato has backed up that record, by the way, so he's got the speed mark, and it is higher than the fuel funny cars, much to the light of the kings of speed. Well, Amato's going to try to punch out Big Red in the McDonald's car for the first time this year. That is a great matchup. He can gain a couple of points if he can beat Corey in the finals. Let's find out again what Kenny Bernstein thinks about being a good driver. I think any driver, whether it be top fuel or pro stock or super stock automatic, there's one thing he has to have, and that's tremendous ability to concentrate. Concentrate leads to good reactions, and of course you have to have good reactions. Your mind has to be fast. But if you don't have concentration up there in anything, and you can't block out everything around you and not let one little bitty thing run through your mind, you probably won't be successful. TNN's exclusive coverage of the 29th Annual Mopar Parts Nationals is brought to you by The Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. And by Split Fire Spark Plugs and Wire Sets, because performance is everything. The term balls out came from the steam engine era when restrictive balls were removed from safety valves to increase boiler pressure and create more horsepower. The term also describes pro stock bike riders. 180 miles an hour in seven seconds. Yep, that's balls out. Greg Underdahl will roll into the starting line on the NCN Communications bike as he will get a chance to run for his first ever national championship title against that lady for Team Winston. Angel Seal. And let's take a look at the ladders and see how they advanced here. First of all, the biggest upset, Matt Hines was knocked out in round number one. He had some problems on the line and he was beaten by Gary Tonglet in the opening round of competition. Got a chance to see how Greg Underdahl advanced. He beat Stephanie Rees, Paul Gast, and then he took out Tonglet in a great match, 736 to a 738. Angel Sealing, meanwhile, coming out of the three spot, beat the Kawasaki of C.J. Smith. Then she beat her teammate John Myers, who fell victim to that red light that we've seen so much of today. And in a 728 to a 729 battle, she beat John Smith. Single Down on the starting line, it's live finals. Looks pretty good from here, David, the starting line does. Oh, it certainly does. Both lanes are great. The, the temperatures have come down, but I've got an interesting point here. You know, even though Matt and Byron Hines aren't in the final here, their presence is still felt. Greg Underdahl has a Byron Hines motor underneath the hood here. For him to win, though, I still think he's going to have to leave on Angel. It's her race to lose, in my opinion. She's either going to have to break or red light. Otherwise, those 720s are just too much for Greg Underdahl's 730s. We'll get back to you on that underneath the hood thing a little while later. 
George Bryce, the captain of Team Winston in the Pro Stock Bike category, and Angel Sealing now pumped up to 110 pounds, and Greg Underdahl. These two ran at Indy last year's second round. Angel Sealing got the win right there. This is the best performance of Greg Underdahl's career. He can flat out ride a motorcycle. We've seen a lot of the Pro Stock finals decided right on the starting line in the bike class. Let's see if that happens right here. If Angel gets out of the gate first, could be a long sprint for Team Green and the NCN scooter with Greg Underdahl in the leathers. Angel just about perfect out of the gate. Not too shabby on the racetrack either. 7, 28, 160 miles an hour. Underdog throws down a 739, 181, but not enough. And today, Angel Sealing, the best in the pro stock fight contingent, the one rider that a lot of people think may be able to give Matt Hines a run for his money. Angel was 18 thousandths away from being perfect. I don't know if it would have helped if Greg Underdahl had cut better than a 471 light. Look at this. George Bryce making a lot of power, and Team Winston picks up the win at 728, and the crowd goes wild. Let's go down to Laura Bird. And I'm here with Angel. That's got to be sweet for you. It's got to be sweet. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I finally won another one. Um, this rate means really a lot to me because... The team has been working hard, star performance parts, you know, we, we got Winston on board now and this was definitely a no bull race. We've been trying so hard and, and it's just great to be here with Jackie finally. Yeah. <laughs> I've been wanting to meet her at the winter circle, so now we have both the Winston girls, so I'm just too excited. Thank you. Congratulations on a big win. There you go. Jackie would be Jackie Beck, Miss Winston, who is down there at the end of the racetrack. Hey, Team Winston, getting the hats from Winston. Way cool. Angel's last win back at Heartland Park, Topeka, so it hasn't been that long, Angel. Pro Stock cars coming up. This ought to be a great run. You know, this run is even more important when you figure that Jay Coughlin did not qualify at Texas, the last stop on the tour. Mike Edwards won that race. Here we go. Pro Stock finals live on TNN. this race okay mike edwards looking to make it two in a row jackie coughlin looking to make it one in a row coughlin has lane choice by a hundredth coughlin practices four hours a day on a christmas tree i think edwards has a christmas tree implanted in his brain this is a pick em deal i wouldn't wager a bob either way Steve, Jake is having a great day, and he is a great driver, but i got to think the momentum is a little bit on the side of Mike Edwards. He's been driving great. The car's been performing. He's taking this team just a little while, though, to deal with the death of John Kite, but now that they got that out of the way, they know how to win. His legacy should ride on here today. That's what it says on the side of the race car. The legacy lives on. On board with the Jags. Mail order machine. You can get one of these through the Jags mail order catalog, by the way. They're only 80 bucks, but you got to pay shipping and handling. That'll run the tab on it, man. The Oldsmobile body machine for Jake looking for his second national event win in his relatively brief career. The guy last year that Steve Evans could contend for the title in 98. He just fired. And Jay Coughlin gets his second pro stock title. Look at the arithmetic, 693, 198 and a half miles an hour. We have seen more red lights in the pro categories here this weekend than any one race I can remember. And Mike Edwards, who won it on the starting line two weeks ago in Dallas, loses it the same way here in Jersey. Jay Coughlin on board. Hit those buttons, put that bad boy in high gear, and we have a winner, Steve Evans. Yep, we're down here waiting for Jed Coughlin Jr. to get out of his car. They've got the arm restraints and helmets and belts and crotch straps and all kinds of things. And Jackie is not used to uh, only one other time have we talked in this particular locale. He's coming out right now, and waiting for him will be... Larry Baker, the general manager of Mopar. He'd much rather give that national event trophy to one of the Dodge boys, but he shakes his hand, he's smiling, and he's proud of the great day we've all enjoyed here in English Town. Hey, man, he red-lighted. Can you believe it? 
I know it. Uh, certainly uh, couldn't have come at a better time. We 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 did run real well in the final. There, we're pretty pleased with the 693. So uh, my hats off to the whole uh, whole Jags team, all the all of our guys back at work, and and uh, my dad, Jeff Taylor. Dick Mask, and everybody just did a fabulous job. I'd like to say hello to my wife and uh, little boy, Jakey, at home. Our hats off to that man. Larry Baker, make it official. Bob? The points. It's WJ still miles in front, but we got a lot of racing yet to go. Look at Jakey up to the three slot. Kurt Johnson rounds out your top five at about 20 points around. Warren still comfortably in the lead. Look at that, Jim Epler. And yes, it is finals time. Can he win for the first time in five years? If he does, he's got to beat that guy, John Force. Promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by this special offer from Diamond D. And they walked away by. Spectacular racing action on asphalt, dirt, and water. You've heard about it, now own it. Non-stop excitement the entire family will enjoy. Jaws will drop and eyebrows will raise as you watch drivers walk away from white knuckle crashes. In HRA, monster trucks, NASCAR, boats, and more. It's all here. Call 1-800-396-5444 and order your copy of And They Walked Away 5. Nothing like the sight of a John Forrest burnout on a crisp, clear spring day here in the Garden State. Here comes Jim Epler. Steve Evans, this ought to be a great final. It's the guy that's won it all against a very resurgent Jim Epler. Well, John Forrest smoked the tires in Dallas two weeks ago to lose to Ron Cavs. He's not going to do that again. Jim Epler has not been in a final since the Bush administration. If anybody's going to smoke the tires, it's going to be Epler. This is where John Forrest gets his first win of the year at one of his favorite racetracks. Steve, let's of course realize Jim Epler has produced a couple of uh, career bests, both with an ET and top speed in the semifinal pairings, but he's also going up against Funny Car's career best driver, John Force, whose worst run of the day has been a 491. That would seemingly favor John Force, but Bob, I think you've seen it. Also, crazier things have happened. Two weeks ago in Dallas, these guys went at it in round number two. Epler actually came in as a favorite mathematically, but he smoked the tires, was taken out by forces, 490 in that championship round. They don't want to beat themselves right here, and if they can make a good quarter mile run like we've seen in that last pass, in that 490 range, this could be some sprint for the championship here at E-Town. Paul Smith in the far lane, Austin Coyle. The guys calling the shot sent their guys into battle. John Forrest with a spectacular run, ups his speed record, 484. 323.89 miles an hour. And unless something sensational happens in the Fuel Dragster final, the Fuel Funny Car speed record is going to be high in the Dragsters for the first time in history. John Forrest continues his streak. He has now won at least one race every year since 1987. Bettered only by Warren Johnson, who's won since 82. Great performance. Flawless vintage Team Castro, Ford, Austin Coyle, Bernie Federley, the Fishman, and the rest of that team. Look at that. Look at the speed. They finally say it. 323.89 miles an hour. 484. That car is unreal here this weekend. And the top fuel guys, well, actually, Joe Amato with a chance to set the speed record in the fuel dragster category. Let's get down to the starting line. I'll bet you it is wild down there, David. Oh, it certainly is. Crowd is going nuts. Team's going nuts. And I'm with the new merchant of speed, Austin. Where is all this coming from? Great day. Well, we've been really working hard on our motor. You know, Wes Cerny and Cruz Pedregon and some of the other guys, Ronnie Cabs, were pushing us really hard. We found a little horse 
horsepower, and it's uh, nice to have it. I guess so. Let's go down to the far end. Happy driver, Steve Evans. Happy driver. John, you just reset the speed record faster than the dragsters. I come in here in the Mopars and run with our Ford Mustang. I mean, it's exciting for Castro, but I tell you what, all these racers are great, and all these brands are great, and we're excited. Uh, Mono called me queen for a day, well, maybe for a few more minutes. He ain't run yet, but I'm excited. That's a big, that's a big deal. Who's the queen now? Well, I ain't saying that. I might be the queen again here in a few minutes, but I'm excited. And I just love all my sponsors, all pro Vista and all of you, Mac. We've done a great job. Fran, I love you guys. Big speed, big coil. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get up the racetrack. Top fills coming. Oh, man. It's been a long time coming at the start of the season. Forrest now in command. Look at that. He is five rounds up on Edgels. Pedregon slips to third after the last three races where he has struggled. Caps and Tim Wilkerson round out the top five. And the crowd goes wild. We have got the top fuel finalists coming up. That is one tough act to follow. We'll take a look at the last race of English Town when we come back. TNN's exclusive coverage of the 29th annual Mopar Parts Nationals has been brought to you by Mopar, Chrysler Corporation Parts, and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. Wow, we're just settling back in. Jimmy Prox said, Yo, Joe, you got to win the race, but you can't let that stinking funny car get out of here with the speed record. Team Tenneco, Joe Amato will take on Corey McClanathan. These guys ran here for the finals in 92. Amato punched out Corey in a great top fuel final. Hey, Dave Brief, have things settled down on the starting line yet? Oh, not too much. The crowd's all standing on their feet waiting to see if this uh, buddy car thing can be topped. I don't know if it can or not. I do know that uh, Joe Amato was chomping at the bit trying to stop the bleeding from Corey McClendon. They're struggling a little bit down on power. They've changed everything, including what they think is the problem Magnetos. This could both be uh, both cars in a 320, Steve Evans. Yeah, that's highly possible. Corey Mack told us earlier that they're racing the racetrack, not their opponent. Easy say harder to do. If Joe Amato doesn't smoke the tires, if it sticks and it doesn't do a wheel stand, I think Amato may have a good shot right here. Up. Just a look at the teams as they back their race cars into position. The potential here for just a tremendous conclusion to the race. A lot of times we've seen that and we have seen cars smoke, but you got two of the baddest hot rides in all of sport right here. This is what makes NHRA Winston drag racing so great. The top fuel final like this at the Mopar Parts Nationals. Go get him, boys. Joe Amato gets the win at 461. 319 miles an hour. Corey Mack right there at 466. 314. If you're scoring at home, five hundredths of a second, the margin of victory. And Joe Amato won't care that he's not the fastest car in the ballpark. He's the best top fueler. And for the first time in two years, Joe Amato puts back-to-back -back wins on the board. Or almost two years. Great job by the Team Tenneco team. They have not missed a beat in the last two races. Steve. Miss Winston, Jackie Beck right here with the hat and the trophy. Joe Amato, as many times as he's won, his hands are trembling just a little bit because it's always exciting. It's always exciting when you win, Steve. You know, that, that race I want to dedicate it to a little girl home. She's a seven years old. Her name is Melissa, and she's just laying there, and she can't move. She can't get out of bed, and she's laying there with three Snoopies, and she watches me every week, and this one's for you, Melissa. That's great. What, what you need to do in the next few races is to get Corey Mack in earlier rounds and put him away. Yeah, I know. Corey's, a, that's a tough car over there, but for, for Tenneco Automotive and Keystone Automotive and Valvoline and PPG and all my sponsors, you know, Corey, you're a tough, oh. tough, tough, tough guy, but, uh, you know, we got to the final, and he keeps hanging in there with the... I won't tell you what I call it, the hot rod from the Hamburger Hut from hell, but we love you all fans, and uh, it was a great, great final. I'm glad to be here in English town. We're glad to have you, Joe Amato, Corey Mack, always the sportsman. He still has the points lead. It's pretty easy to smile, Bob. Man. Hey, Joe, can you buy me one? Look at Joe creeping up now. 
about three rounds behind. Corey Max, Selzy, Dunn, and Jim Head continue to hang in there. We have a lot of racing yet to go this year, so Corey Max in the lead, but it is a long way from over. Wow. What a day it's been here. Our Mopar high performer at the Mopar Parts Nationals. Hey, who else? John Forrest, for the first time in drag racing history, a funny car has a speed record higher than a top fuel car. Congratulations to John Forrest. We'd like to remind you that our next stop on the NHRA race tour on TNN, it's coming up in two weeks. Check out the Fram Route 66 Nationals, May 31st, 6 Eastern, right here on TNN Motorsports. That's what it's all about. Joe Amato gets the win, a race that has given us wins by Pete Robinson and Clayton Harris and Jim Booker and Jungle Jim. A race that was moved from the dead of the summer to get away from the heat and humidity has given us a day with more hot racing action than we've seen at one race in a long time. For Laura Bird, for Dave Reef, for Steve Evans, for all the very talented folks that helped put this show on, I'm Bob Fry. Thank you very much for being with us. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of this Mopar Parts Nationals. Oh, <laughs> Up to date. ExperienceCountry.com, your personal source for all things country, from race cars to country stars. Connect to country.com.